And now it's time for our weekly equality segment. The world is facing its largest immunization effort in history, and one of the looming questions is, will the rich get inoculated ahead of the poor? Well, island-hopping drones might have something to say. Here to discuss is Bloomberg News' trade czar, Brendan Murray, live from London. Brendan, it's great to have you on Quick Take. In one of your recent articles, you take a look at how Miami actually illustrates the equity and equality when it comes to vaccines in a global economy, um, or lack thereof, I should say. Paint that picture for us. Why is Miami such a good example? Well, Miami sits between, uh, you know, some of the most expensive real estate in the U.S. and some of the poorest uh, in the region. Uh, if, uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, 50 to 100 miles from Haiti. And yet, uh, you know, Palm Beach is, uh, you know, not too far away. So it really illustrates how uh, something as important as a, as a hub uh, like an airport uh, and Miami will be key to that because it's one of the few in the U.S. that are certified to handle pharmaceuticals. Mm. Uh, will be in in being kind of a key crossroads for for a vaccine that eventually will become an export uh, a, a, an exported U.S. product as opposed to one we're consuming at home. Based on your reporting, um, you write that that Miami is going to be turning into one of the country's busiest turnstiles when it comes to international air cargo. Um, give us an idea of what what airport officials are, are thinking, how they're preparing for it. Well, they're preparing for it in a number of ways. Uh, one of them is just uh, to be the transit uh, spot for vaccines that are made in China or, or Europe uh, to distribute throughout Latin America. Uh, I think Brazil has purchased. Uh, you know, uh, hundreds of millions of, of China's vaccine. So mm -hmm. Miami will play a key role in in the in being the sort of uh, transit spot for for a lot of those vaccines that are that are made in other places. Uh, you know, Miami has something like 120 uh, direct uh, flights into uh, the Caribbean, uh, Central and South America every day. Uh, you know, a lot of those flights aren't uh, aren't full of passengers, and uh, you know they've uh, they've converted some of those into into cargo planes. So so Miami is uh, you know has got the network uh, already established to reach places uh, you know in in the de in developing countries you know to the south of the U.S. What are your sources telling you about about drone capabilities and, and what drones can drones can actually do when it comes to moving the vaccine? And, and which vaccines they'll be able to move, given these storage challenges that we're seeing with at least the mRNA vaccines that are our, our first to market. Right. Well, drones are, are have have been tested and used successfully in places like uh, Africa to reach uh, you know hard to get to places and even you know uh, you know uh, remote sections of Canada and Alaska. So the, the drones have been tested uh, you know to carry small amounts of cargo. Uh, and are and reliably so. Uh, the big question now is whether, like you suggested, that you know uh, some of these vaccines, the Pfizer vaccine, needs to be kept cold, yeah. uh, very cold, um, you know, for for you know, or else it will spoil. So the question is, can drones, uh, you know, do the same thing that refrigerated trucks can, uh, and keep those vaccines cold if they're if they're moving from. You know, I think there are 30 uh, populated islands in the Bahamas, and you know some of them are very small. Uh, you know, if 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 uh, you know where where some planes uh, couldn't go and and trucks, you know, might not be able to access. So so drones are a legitimate option. They're obviously you know one of the you know they they won't be dealing with large volumes, but they uh, you know they, they they would be able to reach uh, some of the areas uh, that. Um, you know, the larger uh, uh, transport vehicles couldn't. Does the picture change at all with, with Moderna's vaccine, even though it still has to be kept at, at cold temperatures? It doesn't have to be uh, kept at, at extreme cold temperatures. It can be, be kept in more traditional or typical freezers. That's my understanding. Does the picture change about transport on drones or, or getting to these hard-to-reach places? The big difference between the Moderna and the Pfizer uh, vaccines are uh, Pfizer's needs to be surrounded with dry ice. And, and and Moderna's you know wouldn't wouldn't need as much uh, if any if if it's if it's if it's in a refrigerated uh, container or vehicle. So dry ice is very uh, you know it's, it's it, it can last it can, it can preserve Pfizer's vaccine for up to ten days. 
but uh, it's not in very high quantities. Mm. Uh, it's 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 made in 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 in, uh, in places that aren't necessarily near where the vaccine are going to be distributed. Uh, Florida, for example, doesn't have any dry ice manufacturers. Wow. They're going to have to bring theirs in from Georgia. So, uh, uh, so it's it, it's a it, it's a key logistical challenge uh, uh, with the Pfizer vaccine that the Moderna. Uh, 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 doses don't have to deal with. Bloomberg News' trades are Brendan Murray, live from London. Brendan, thank you for your time and for joining us for our weekly equality segment right here on Quick Take. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.